Welcome to part two. I hope you had a chance to not only listen to part one, but also took a break between part one and this section, which is recognizing recruitment traps and how to avoid abduction for human trafficking. So let's get started. There are two ways that you could become a victim, either through recruitment or through abduction. Recruitment is the most common tactic traffickers use to obtain their victims, and that's because they do this through psychological manipulation. They manipulate something that you want or need, and it could be anything from love, food, luxury vacations, a sign-on bonus, a place to live, or a job. They listen to what you sing, so they are very good listeners, and they're also very high in their social skills. They listen to what you say, they listen to your stories, they find out where you have been hurt, they identify your level of self-confidence, they figure out if you're a little bit too arrogant, and because you're too arrogant, you won't pay attention to the details. And then they also figure out, well, what are your dreams and your aspirations in life? They also use this information against you so they can know what to promise you or what to dangle in front of you or to develop the kind of personality that they know that you would need to then gain your trust. They use all this information against you and then they make these false promises and they trick you into believing that they are who you need or that they can give you the something that you need or you want. So you can avoid being recruited for human trafficking by recognizing these following signs. And this is not exhaustive, but I tried to make it as exhaustive as possible for the most common forms of being recruited. So first remember that recruiters can be a single person or a network of people. Recruiters will often share your same national or cultural background, and they can be of either gender and of any age. And most often you will have known or met the recruiter and they methodically created a relationship with you, gained your trust, and now you feel comfortable with them. So if you have met someone and they know more about you than you know about them, and they are now telling you that they can help you in some way, be very cautious and do not automatically believe anything that they say. And if you suddenly have this trust with them and you don't really have a long history with them, then that's also a clue to be careful before you start believing anything about what they promise you for an opportunity. Now, if you have a background of violence abuse, um, such as domestic violence or sexual assault or abuse, then this does make you at a higher risk for recruitment. And this is because you have already been abused and if you have not healed, you may subconsciously be attracted to the same type of abuser and then they will then try to not only use your vulnerabilities against you from your past, but they will also try to be over the top, over compensation of all that you know that you psychologically needed so that you can then believe that they are the savior or they are someone who's going to be completely different but they're only using this to go against your, their true honorable intentions for you. Also, if you are a teenager and you are thinking about running away from home or you do not have stable housing, then you are also at a higher risk. And the way that you can be recruited is because someone will promise you food, a place to stay, and they will say that they are not expecting anything in return. Just stay as long as you need. Just don't worry, I'm here for you. Also be cautious of anyone who is not part of a legal business agency or social services and they are now offering you shelter, drugs, or in some way helping you to avoid the police or other authorities. This is called the helping tactic in human trafficking. So they act as if they're helping you with no ulterior motives, only to then make you become indebted to them and then forced into prostitution or labor trafficking to help pay back this debt that said that you didn't owe them, but now miraculously somehow you do. So now another sign 
if you are an adult male or female and you have a new romantic partner, be very careful if they say that they want you all to themselves. And when they do this, they also start isolating you. Don't give in to their growing demands to stop talking with your friends or being with your family or being with anyone outside of your relationship with him or her. And the major warning signs are when not only are they isolating you, but they're also controlling you, controlling your phone, and controlling your social media or deleting your social media. So do not give in to pressures to do any of these things and try to get away, get to a place of safety. And also do not give in to pressures to move to a new city or a state to be with them. I mentioned video gamers. So for video, for video gamers, if another gamer, regardless of their name or the gender of their avatar, if they want to move your conversation from the gaming website and off of the chat rooms and go to a more direct communication for DMs, like in Facebook Messenger, Skype, etc., then this could be part of their grooming strategy for you. They will start a conversation with you gradually gain your trust, and then their goal is to get you to share sexually explicit photos and videos of yourself or to even record yourself masturbating. Then they will try to blackmail you for more videos or pictures, and they're going to not only blackmail you for more, but the things that they want you to do in those videos or pictures are going to be more and more graphic and might even start becoming violent. If you refuse and say, no, I'm not doing this anymore, I'm not interested, then they will continue to blackmail you until you agree to meet with them to either quote unquote, make peace, let's just be friends, you know, I'm sorry, let's just start over, or so that you can pay them off. But when you do, this is all a trap, their ultimate goal will be to then abduct you. And regardless of your age, this can happen because you are now thinking about protecting your reputation rather than thinking from a clear mind that this was a trap from the beginning. Now, regardless of your age, another tactic is sexting. So avoid sexting, especially with someone. This is when, of course, when you're, when you're texting someone and you're sending in sexual pictures or videos of yourself. So avoid doing this with someone that you just met regardless of how you met them and regardless if you met them through someone else that you know. So avoid doing this at all times, but especially in new relationships. Now, for any of you who have an OnlyFans account, this one is for you. As a subscriber to the OnlyFans account, you also can be recruited for human trafficking and not know it. So if you get a special invitation from the person that you are following, it could be a trap. And just like the video gaming and the blackmailing trap, this could be your fate as well. So this is what will most likely happen. The person you are following will get you to start sending your own sexual content to them on your OnlyFans account. And then they'll tell you to do more and more sexual things or more and more illicit things. And then to send those either through DM, through their own private email, or they might even give you a phone number, which is a fake phone number. When you do this, of course, they are using this to then come against you and using it for blackmail. And then they can use that also for recruiting you to now be forced into online pornography by either selling these images and videos of you or making you do that as a way to keep all the other things that you sent secret. For you ladies, another trap to avoid is sugar dating. Now, sugaring is defined as a relationship where an older, wealthier person obtains an intimate relationship from a younger, financially struggling person through money, lavish dates, luxury vacations, and other gifts. The wealthy person is usually called a sugar daddy, but it also might be a sugar mama. And the younger person is called a sugar baby. So when you're doing sugar dating, it's often a way that people are seeing it as a very fun and a stress-free way for young people, especially college students, to get their financial needs met. However, the majority of sugar dating websites, such as the seekingarrangements.com website, 
is really a way to get sex traffickers to already have your information. And when you go on what you think is a sugar date, it's actually you getting caught into a trafficking situation where they are then going to recruit you into uh, human trafficking itself or force you into prostitution. Now, if you are a male, you can also be recruited for sex trafficking. If you meet a woman on a dating site and you have an in-person date and she easily begins talking about very sexually graphic acts that she wants to do to you, then please, as tempting as it may be, avoid leaving the date and going with her, especially if she's asking you if she can bring a friend along to join in on the fun. Because then what will happen is that when you get to her hotel room or her supposed home, there might be other traffickers there waiting to abduct you. And if you do have a date and she is very sexually aggressive, then remember to not leave your food or your drinks unattended because she could try to drug you. Now, people may think, oh, well, I'm a confident person. This wouldn't happen to me. But if you are an alpha male, you are very likely to have your confidence exploited and then to become a victim if you are indeed being targeted by a trafficker. So this is what will happen in that situation. So if you're an alpha male, they're going to assume and figure out that you already know you're confident, handsome, and sexy or attractive, and that you expect women to want you and to desire you. And so then the female recruiter can use your confidence against you and make you not question her real motives. And then if you have low low self-confidence, then you can also be manipulated because then the female recruiter will recognize this and then she'll use her flattery to make you feel good about yourself, make you feel confident or even special that she chose you. So regardless of your confidence level, do not go anywhere with this female, even if it's to her car, to a back alley or a back room, and they're saying you're going to have just, you know, sex right there. Just avoid that because most of the time it's just a trap. So let's go on to another recruiting trap. If you are looking for a new job or career opportunity, avoid the trap of false employment. Many trafficking recruiters, they'll use fake employment agencies, newspaper ads, or even fake businesses to get job seekers to apply for these jobs that promise a great income or a great opportunity. And then when you go to the interview, then somehow the interviewer has to suddenly change the location to another private location. So if this happens, that's warning sign number one. And warning sign number two is if now that interviewer suggests that the two of you drive in his or her car to a second interview site, this is definitely a trap. So be careful if any of these situations happen because you're looking for a job or a career opportunity. And also be careful if a friend or a friend of a friend introduces you to someone who is offering a job that is in another city, state, or country, and be especially careful if they offer to pay for an airplane ticket or hotel accommodations for you to come and do this interview. Be very careful if there's a sign-on bonus for a job that already seems too good to be true, and if they say, well, don't worry about the expenses because once you get your license or once you get the job, then we'll just take care of it then. We're going to go ahead and take care of all of your expenses now. This is how they set you up for labor trafficking by then getting you through either the recruitment or abduction. Now you're someplace where you don't have any friends or any connections and they're telling you, well, you can't leave because now you owe us this lump sum of money that they originally said that you did not have to worry about. So that's a very obvious and a very common trap. In the job recruitment traps, what the recruiter is doing is manipulating your need for income, a desire for excitement, or a desire for career growth. And this is the main way that men become human trafficking victims. They do it by focusing on your need or your desire for a job, promotion, a career self-esteem, or just money opportunities. So if you become aware of an income employment opportunity, or just any opportunity that requires you to move someplace 
without knowing any full details, be very careful. Also be very careful if the opportunity requires you to be paid under the table or if the employer is going to make this special hiring exception just for you in the event you might have a legal history problem or questions with your citizenship status. And if again, it appears too good to be true, be very careful because this is usually a labor trafficking trap and they will use your legal history and citizenship status against you as a way to keep you in bondage. So if you are indeed offered a great opportunity, don't just go on the website or social media. Take these additional steps to make sure that the business is safe and not a trap. So one, go to their website in the state of where the business is or is supposed to be and look for that state business registration website and personally look for the business's articles of incorporation. And then two, check the state's licensing board to see if that business really, really is there. Now, they could have a fake license. They can even have a fake registration. So that may not do everything, but that can at least give you the beginning point. And also remember that small businesses, including food trucks, farms, and construction companies, these must have a valid license or be registered with a government agency. So then you can take it a step further and do number three by checking online to see well, what licenses or registrations does this kind of business or industry need? And then once you know that, then go to those registration or licensing websites and see if that business is listed. You can also check and see if there's any registration complaints or the board of ethics that can give you like an extra step. Four, do an internet search and type in the name of the business and add to it the word reviews, scam, or lawsuit, and see what pops up. Another trick that they might use to get around all of this is to say, well, no, we're just a charity or a nonprofit organization, so we don't really have to have any of those. And that's where they can get away with not having to pay you directly. They can say that this is just a volunteer from a place of religiosity or pulling on your faith or your belief in doing good or your kindness and then use that against you under the umbrella of this is a nonprofit or a charity organization. But what you can do, you can still check them out. So go to the IRS website and every legal nonprofit or charity organization must be registered as a tax exempt organization. So you can put that name in there and if it does not show up, they are not legal or they are not in good standing. And I will include this link in the YouTube description as well. Now, sometimes if you're able to and you can see the actual physical location of the job, then please consider doing that as well. But when you go to look for the place in person, do not go with the same person who told you about the opportunity because that friend or that person might be involved in trafficking and recruiting you. And if you can go next door, if there's another business or store, check in with them, see if they have anything that seems suspicious or anything that they are questioning about the legitimacy of that business. And again, this is even if it's a farm, even if it's a food truck, you can still verify before you just go across the city lines or state borders or to a different country, you can still verify if it's a legitimate business. Now, one common trick, if you are going across country, especially if you're coming into America, that one laboring traffic trap is when you are offered a job in another country and the so-called business or boss, they tell you that you have to do something like well, we're going to get everything corrected. We're going to get everything straight for you to be in a in our in the other country legally. But in order for you to do that, we have to have your citizenship papers. And once we have this, we can give them the, to the authorities and we can do everything to get all the paperwork straight. So of course you want the job, you want the opportunity, you want to go to the new country and you give it to them. And if that's your only source of documents, if it's the real one, the original copies, then once you get to that country, 
they can then, as the traffickers, take your documents away from you, refuse to give you your passport. And now, although you were a legally allowed person to be in that new country, now you're in a situation where you appear to be an illegal, uh, illegal immigrant because you don't have any documentation to show that you are legally there. And then what the trafficker will do to keep you in bondage is to tell you what, well, because you're not going to know what the immigration laws are or what your protections are, and you won't have any money or any way to get to any offices or authorities to help you. It can use this and exploit you to then recruit you or abduct you. And whether you are an adolescent all the way to a senior citizen, then they can use the promise of love or a promise of a relationship to then get you someplace in a city or a state where you're isolated and alone and now you're trapped. So if you have met someone online or in person and your emotional connection seems to have grown so intense and in a short amount of time, and this person is now claiming that they love you and that they tell you this often, they seem to be everything opposite from what you told them about your last relationships. It's a very strong possibility that if they're also trying to get you to move to another state or for the two of you to run off together and live happily ever after, this is a strong sign that they might be recruiting you and that their love is not sincere. If you are someone who is in a mall, and a playground, or maybe even at a state fair, and someone has a camera, and they walk up to you and say, oh, your daughter is pretty, or your son is handsome, or you're pretty yourself. And they say, hey, would you like to be a model? You should be a model. Let me take a picture of you. What they will do is take the pictures, maybe even have you pose in certain ways, get your contact information to give to their quote unquote agent. And then what they will then do is take your face Photoshop it or creatively put it onto a video of a pornography scene or a pornography video that they can manipulate, send it back to you, and then use that to blackmail you. Of course, you're horrified this can be your child or this can be you, and you don't want this to be seen because it looks very real to the untrained eye. And so like with the video gamers, they will then use these videos or these images to blackmail you to get you to meet them some other place to then either abduct you or to then force you into online pornography or forced prostitution. So be very careful if anyone does that to you, just immediately don't worry about your reputation, go immediately to the authorities and report this. When it comes to recruiting for human trafficking, Recruiting is mainly the psychological games and manipulation and the traps that they use to trick you into being trafficked. It's more psychological than it is physical. But abduction is not only a physical way of forcing you into human trafficking, it's often very violent. And like with recruiting, abduction is often by someone that you know but we've gone over those, so let's get into ways you can be abducted by non-family members or by strangers. For children, the most common reason for abductions is mainly by family members or by acquaintances. But for most non-family child abductions, they usually happen on the street while the children are playing, walking, or even riding their bikes. Younger children are more likely to be playing or walking with a parent, but they are less likely to have an adult with them if they are a school age child, or they can kind of walk to school by their own, maybe go to the park by themselves. So the older children, still school age, are usually by themselves, walking alone, or they are with their friends. Children and adolescent abductions occur, occur more often when a child is going to or from school, or from school-related activities. So make sure your child pays attention to his or her surroundings, and you teach them what to look out for. And some of the tricks that abductors use and the things that you can teach them are, one, if someone is asking the child for directions, or if they're asking the child for help somehow. They might also offer the child a ride, or they can use a pet, 
or some sort of interesting animal to see if they can get the child near enough for them to grab or if they can just start creating a relationship with them and then that would lead to ultimately abducting the child. They might also try to offer the child money or candy and they might even say, oh, hey, so-and-so, your mom told me to come get you. And the child might think, oh, they know my name, then maybe my mom or my dad really did send them. So let them know that even if someone calls your name, unless I told you to go with them, do not go with that stranger. Now, if the abductor does get close enough to your child, then teach your child, if they have a cell phone, to pull out the cell phone and say, you're on video, leave me alone. Teach them to run away and scream. Have them call 911 and say help while they're running away, hopefully. And if they're not able to run away, still teach them to scream as loudly as they can and say, you're not my parent. If they are caught and held, teach them to drop down to the ground because it's harder for someone to pick up a scrambling child who is also screaming than it is to just take them if they are standing up. Also reassure your child that if anyone says that they're going to kill you as their parent or one of their brothers or sisters or anyone that they love or maybe even their pet, then let them know that they are just lying to you and they're trying to trick you and you are not going to get in trouble and I'm not going to be mad at you. So you don't listen to them, you still run away and you still scream for help. As an adult, one way you can avoid abduction is that whenever you leave your home, even if you're doing it to just run a quick errand, make sure that you have the essential items that you need so that you can get help or get access to help. And that would be one, a cell phone or a phone card, two, access to your bank account, three, an extra charger for your phone, and you can have that in your car or on your person, and then four, any medication that you might need. Another way to avoid abduction is to pay attention to your surroundings before you leave a building or a store. So take a minimum of 30 seconds and evaluate the area that you are about to go into. This is actually, by the way, a training routine that Marines are taught and it's called combat profiling. And it teaches Marines how to look around and get a general idea of the area that they're going into, how that area is supposed to look. And they're trained to look for, is there anyone or anything that doesn't match the situation? And you can do the same thing. If you're going out, you're leaving a building or a store, then what you can do is see, is there anyone lurking around your car or just lurking around outside? If so, are they dressed appropriately for the season? And then three, when you look at them, do they look at you, but then they suddenly turn away? These are all possible indicators that the individual could be waiting on you and seeing you as a potential victim. And also, don't just look at eye level. Look up and around. So imagine that you are like in a bubble and there's like this big ball of air around you. So you're going to look up, down, all around your body, all around the location of where you're going, and also near your parked car. So you might seem like this is a lot to do, but it only takes 30 seconds and you can do it before you leave the building as if you're waiting for an Uber or waiting for the rain to die down. You can easily do it and it might be 30 seconds, but it's 30 seconds that could save your life. So please consider doing that. Also, number four, before you leave a building, get your keys ready so that you can more quickly and easily get into your car. This helps to make sure that you're not fumbling around with your car and making it easy for you to be distracted while you're just standing outside your car and someone is already out there waiting for you. If you happen to have a car that has an auto unlock, then when you do get to your car, make sure that there is no one behind you so that as soon as you open it, they can quickly get into the back seat as well. Before you get into your car, check the back seats and make sure no one is in there. And as soon as you do get into the car, 
shut the door. Don't leave it open as you're getting your briefcase, purse, or your grocery bags organized. Get in, shut the door, and lock it. Number six, avoid going places alone after dark, especially if you are in a place that you are not familiar with. Number seven, if you are alone and someone is coming too close to you, look them straight in the eye and have a serious face. This is the fastest way, again, to award off a potential criminal because you're making that eye contact and they don't want to be recognized or remembered. And don't worry about if you're looking at them and you're giving a mean face. Just focus on being safe. And remember to just trust your instincts. Don't worry about appearing like you're racist or a nasty or a mean person either. And I say that part because unfortunately, um, I had a client and I'm going to change the details to make sure I maintain confidentiality. But I had a client and She is not a black person, but there was a black man coming toward her. And because she did not want to appear to be racist, she did not go to the other parking lot. She actually just kept walking toward him. And then he unfortunately did abduct and rape her. But she said, I felt like I shouldn't have trusted him. I felt like I should have moved away, but I didn't want to be mean. So again, don't worry about appearing mean or racist or anything that's negative. It's better to be safe and to trust your instincts and to save yourself rather than trying to be nice and then someone else now victimizes you. And speaking of instincts, remember that your body and your mind are created to survive and to avoid danger at almost any cost. And part of this includes humans having two distinct areas of our brain called the neocortex. And this is the part that controls our emotions, thought, perception, and some of the memory, as well as having a limbic system. And this controls our basic drives, such as hunger, sex, and caring for your offspring. It also controls your basic emotions, such as fear, pleasure, or anger, and it's where your fight or fight re- fight or flight response is. So when it comes to abduction, sometimes, like with my client that I just mentioned, you might have a sense or a feeling that something isn't right or that something feels weird about something or someone. And that feeling was your limbic system being triggered and almost like a panic button is trying to get you to recognize that what you're not seeing intellectually or visually, something in your body is sensing that you are approaching danger or in an unsafe situation. But what happens is that if you continue to stay around that person or stay in that situation, then you will then override your fear for your fight and flight response, and then you'll keep continuing to stay in a place that is dangerous for you. And your neocortex will then decide, well, I guess if they're not listening, then maybe it's not really a real dangerous situation and there's no threat here. And so in that situation, then your mind will then just continue to ignore the warning signs and you're going to just walk into an unsafe situation. For example, here's a famous example for uh, Ted Bundy. Remember, he's a serial killer, famous serial killer. He approached one of his victims called Carol DeRanche in a parking lot at a shopping mall. And he told her that he was a police detective and that he had just stopped someone from stealing her car and that she needed to go with him to the police station so that she can file a report. So she's hearing all this and she thinks, well, this seems kind of fishy, but she didn't listen to that. She went ahead and got in the car with them. Lo and behold, obviously, Ted Bundy trying to kill her, but she was able to get away and she was able to escape. So I'm grateful for that. But if she would have listened to her instinct from her limbic system, then she would have avoided that traumatic situation altogether. So remember, you also have to listen to yourself and trust your instincts. And that is what number nine is for avoiding abduction. Remember to trust your instincts or what some would call a gut instincts. 
This is a biological protection system that is picking up on the little tiny danger signals in your environment that you need to pay attention to and to avoid. And the more you don't trust yourself and you ignore these gut feelings and warnings, the more likely you will put yourself in danger by making yourself believe that a person who is not good is good and that a situation that is not safe is safe. So definitely please trust your instincts and believe in yourself and you trusting in yourself is what can keep you from being abducted. The technique that Ted Bundy used is related to our number nine way of avoiding abduction. So the technique he used is called luring and it's a cover story that you use to help someone help someone else or to believe that you were helping them. So in Ted Bundy, his cover story was a way to try to help the victim avoid getting her car um, stolen. And in human trafficking, they use luring to make you think you're actually going to be able to help protect or help save someone else. And often it's the abductor making his or herself look like they are the person who needs help. And they'll create a story to make you feel sorry or a sympathetic for them, or even have pity on them. And by making a story where they seem helpless, it's a psychological trick for you to not see them as a threat and for you to therefore let your guard down. And this could be like a fake injury, a fake emergency, something's wrong with my car, there's a baby in the car, can you help drive us to the police station? It's a story to help you let down your guard, see them as someone who needs help. Therefore, you're not thinking about your own safety and they play on your need to help or to keep someone else safe as a way to then make you weak and vulnerable. And remember, trust your instincts. And it's better to trust your instincts than to try to be nice or try to help someone when your instincts are already telling you that this seems really weird or suspicious and begin to understand that whether it's human trafficking or in your life, it's okay to say no. You can be nice and say no, but you're not meant to do everything for everyone. And in human trafficking, saying no can actually help you save your life. And if someone is needing help, even if they seem like they are very desperate and crying You can say, okay, I will call the police and I will have him come here or I will have them come and help you. Let that be your way of help. But you don't get into a situation where you are now leaving your car or letting someone into your house because they're giving you a lore human trafficking cover story that then makes you the actual victim. Number 10, and we have a total of 16. Number 10 is that if you enjoy traveling, avoid traveling alone. But if you must travel alone or deeply desire to travel alone, then let your friends and your family know not only where you're going, but also give them the hotel information, have a way to check in with them daily, and also let them know where you're going, what time you're going to get there, and then what time you're going to get back. Number 11, when you are in your hotel room, Take pictures of your room. A large amount of sex trafficking happens in hotel rooms and photos that are taken of the trafficking victims are usually in these hotel rooms and they're used and sold online to potential buyers. So because these photos are in the hotel, the photos can be used such as the wallpaper, the carpet patterns, the furniture, or any other feature that's in your hotel room, it can help the authorities identify not only which hotel you are staying in, but also which room you are staying in. So you taking pictures and you can store them on the cloud or you taking them and then sending them to your family upon your arrival can help the police find you if unfortunately you are abducted. One great way And that you can do is not only uploading it to the cloud, but there's also a great app that can help you avoid being trafficked when you are traveling. And it's called Traffic Cam. It's available on both the iPhone and 
Android, and you can also just download it from the website. So I will include that link for you as well on the YouTube description. Number 12, if you are indeed traveling alone, but it's because someone has offered you a job, especially if it's a modeling job and the person is also paying to fly you out of state or fly you to this hotel or location, then be very cautious because what usually happens is that this is an abduction trap that they can get you isolated and then just keep you held hostage in that room. If we look at a six-year analysis of trafficking locations, the study shows us that when minors are trafficked, 56.6% of sex trafficking activities are in a hotel or in a motel. So whether you are a minor or an adult, anytime you are traveling alone, especially if someone is offering to pay for your airfare or your hotel, please at all possible instances avoid it or be more attentive to your surroundings and find other ways inside the hotel to keep yourself safe and to let someone know where you are at all times. So number three, other very, I'm sorry, number 13, other very common abduction locations in addition to hotels and motels are truck stops, travel rest stops, underground subway stations, and underground parking lots. So these locations, especially the truck stops and the rest stops, are very convenient sites for traffickers to not only abduct and sell their victims, but it's also a very easy and a very fast way to take you from that rest stop location and to get you in a truck, in a car, and going someplace else and no one ever sees you again. So be very careful in these locations, especially again, if you are traveling alone. And number 14, speaking of parking lots, try to always use an outdoor parking lot or a street parking and pick a spot that's well lit and try to also be as close as possible to your location or close to a place where there will be heavy pedestrian traffic or if not that, a business that you know is going to be open when you come back to your car. Number 15, If you approach your vehicle and a van is parked next to your driver's side, be very cautious. Abductors often wait inside their van or they'll be in the parking lot watching and seeing who is driving alone or how they can spot potential victims. So once they see you, the abductors will then go and park their van next to your car making it kind of very tight that you get to kind of squeeze into and they will then hide inside the van until you come back. And because your car is parked next to their van and that side is their passenger side that they can open up and put someone in, you can be the person that they snatch and put in there. So if you see this, first and foremost, don't go to your car, go back into the store or go to a business that's nearby Ask an employee or a security guard if they can walk you back to your car and make sure you get in safely. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, then what you can do is get in on your passenger side. So it might look weird, but they can't come and get you from your passenger side if they're already waiting on the driver's side to get you. So those are two ways that you can avoid the van being right next to you. And then The last one for today, which is number 16, is about social media. So although it's common to post everything on social media, everything that we do each day, then remember that social media is social and it's not just your family, coworkers, and friends seeing what you're doing. Often, it can be abductors and traffickers who are watching you and tracking what you're doing or where you're going or this just they're just doing a random search and using keywords that they can then track to see well who is on social media posting that they are going somewhere that I can easily find them identify them using their social media profile and then abduct them so be very careful and they can use these ways to trap you 
regardless of your privacy settings. It's the words that you're typing, the pictures that you're using, that they can use geographical clues and images to then trace you down or identify you if they know that you are already in the area. So for example, if you're going to a sports bar or going to a sports event, be as general as possible in your posts when you are there. If you can say that you're going to a comedy club, for example, don't say, oh, I'm going to uh, Mark Jones Comedy Club at four o'clock on 15th Street. Instead, just say, I'm about to go hear some jokes or going to a comedy club tonight. So don't do anything specific while you are at that location. Just be very general. Now, when you get home, you can then say, oh, hey, I was at so-and-so tonight at 9 p.m. You can give all the details then because then you're safely back home. But don't let someone know exactly where you are when you're out in public, especially if you're out in public by yourself. Now, we also have right now, depending on if you're listening to this in November 2022, we have football season and tailgating season going on. And so if you're going to like a tailgate, still be as general as possible and don't post what part of the parking lot you are in or post a picture where your parking section or even where your stadium seat is and someone can figure it out where you are and then come and abduct you that way. And if you're going on vacation, don't post the details. Don't even post that you are on vacation until you come back from vacation. Otherwise, the abductors in that vacation spot will know that you are there and they can spot you again based off of your social media profile or the abductors and the criminals back in your home area could know that you're gone and then come in and rob your place or just be there waiting for you because they know that no one is there and the home is empty. So in addition to learning the truths today of human trafficking, you now have safety tips to avoid abduction and how to recognize when you are being recruited. So please consider sharing this particular episode and also the part one with at least one person so that this can help not only you, but at least one other person also stay safe and avoid abduction. And that does end our time for today, but please, please continue this important conversation and remember to do so using science and love. And if you run too fast